best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. Hello and welcome to the Frontier Motor Show. My name is Ivan Strucko and this is the Frontier Motor Show. We are videotaping this live at the Coworks Annex in beautiful downtown Pensacola. Also, this is streaming on our Facebook page at Frontier Motors, so if you've got any questions, go to Facebook and uh, you can watch this if you want. Um, if you're, uh, this, of course, is being videotaped for Blab TV, uh, cable and, um, uh, and satellite. We've been doing this show going on 23 years and this is a show about what's going on in the auto industry and also a little bit what's going on in the Pensacola area as far as cars and car sales are concerned. Frontier Motors is an independent used car dealership. We have approximately 400 cars in inventory and we've been serving the Pensacola community, like I said before, for 23 years. We started off with about 25 cars and we have become the number one independent dealer in our area. We are the go-to dealer for free advice when it comes to buying a car. Now, what I mean by free advice, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy from us. Of course, that's what we want. But the free advice can be if you're buying a friend's car, relative car, maybe a neighbor's car, maybe you saw a car posted on a bulletin board or, uh, or on Craigslist, and you wanna know what a fair price would be. So what we do is we do free appraisals for you, and we will give you our selling price on that same type of car. And with having 400 cars in inventory, we might have that same car sitting there that we can use our cars as an example. Some people ask us, well, how do you get the pricing? Well, there's a couple of ways that we get the pricing. Some of them are the same ways you can by Googling it. Um, on, if you Google used car prices, you're going to find an NEDA book, you're going to find a Kelly Blue book, and you're going to find an, any, uh, an Edmonds book. What we do is we have the official NEDA guidebook, which looks, a little, which looks like this. It's a yellow book, and the reason we use the official book, it's different than the one on the internet, is because this is what the bankers and the insurance companies and credit unions in our area use to value a vehicle as far as how much they will finance on that vehicle. Sometimes it gets confusing when you call your banker up that they give you a book value, which is not the selling value. The other book that we use is called a black book, and the black book is a wholesale guide. Now you'll notice I've got this uh, black book in my hand. I really, this is a, a book from 2014. We really don't get the book anymore. Everything, of course, now is on smartphones. So I get the NEDA value, I get the black book value, but most importantly, the way that we get the, what I call the real value is by auction results. The Mannheim auctions are the largest auction chains in the world. We're lucky enough to have one right here on W Street in Pensacola. It's a Mannheim auction. They run on a Tuesday anywhere from 400 to 700 cars. The second largest auction in the nation is within driving range, and that is in Orlando. And they will run between five and 6,000 cars every Tuesday. If you take what's going on just in our southeastern area, there's between 20 and 25,000 cars being exchanged every single week. All this data gets compiled and I can pull up a particular vehicle and know what I can buy one on the average for at the auction. If I know what I can buy the car for, no matter what the banker says the value is, I can give you a real value by figuring out how much it costs me to buy the car, to transport the car, and make a profit on it. And, though, and what I do is then I give you that figure and say, this is what I can sell that car for, and that's gonna help you make sure that you don't pay too much, whether it be from an independent, a private individual, or perhaps maybe an independent car dealership, like Frontier Motors, or a, a new car dealer um, that also sells used cars. Um, of course, a lot of the new car dealers these days are getting into the used car business. Years ago when we started, new car dealers weren't that much into used cars, but they figured out that um, that with us being a successful beast, uh, selling between 200 and 250 cars a month, well, they jumped on the bandwagon, and a lot of cars that they used to t take to the auctions are now being kept and sold there. So we will give you also the pricing on their particular car. We will also run free history reports for you. So let's say that you go to one of the smaller dealers in Pensacola. Um, they will have a link to Carfax, for example, but you have to pay for it, which a Carfax report is $39.95 plus tax. So it's about $42. Well, at Frontier Motors, we run Carfax reports for you at no charge. So if you're looking at five or six different vehicles, all we need from you is the ID number. And if you don't know what the ID number is, that is the 17-digit VIN number 
which is on the windshield and also on the door of the vehicle and on the title. If it's your personal vehicle, by the way, it's on your insurance card also. Some people say, well, I don't have it with me. Well, if you got your insurance card in your wallet, you have the ID number of your car with you. If you give me that ID number, I can run the history report. And also by running the history report, my computer program also gives me that auction value. And then I can say, okay, well, if I can buy this particular car at the auction for $30,000, and let's say the NADA book value is $35,000, I would quote you a selling price of somewhere between 32 and 33, because I can bring the car back home, make a profit on it, and still be well under the book value. And that's why you might not want to pay attention to your banker when he's giving you a book value, because he's telling you what they will be financing that particular car for, not so much what the value is. We also talk a little bit what's new in the car industry, and I just got my new uh, automotive news this morning. I get electronically, and one of the things that I saw on here is that Steve McQueen's old Mustang called Bullet, or it's from the movie Bullet, is going to auction. A guy bought this vehicle back in 68 for $3,500, and they're gonna take it to the Barrett Jackson auction in um, uh, uh, Florida, and um, it's an unrestored 68 Fastback. I don't know if you ever watched the movie Bullet, one of our favorite movies, one of the best car chase movies ever, uh, is expected to fetch as much as $5 million. And if it does, it will be the most expensive Mustang ever sold. And that is going to be happening, I believe in January, they're gonna be selling that um, in uh, Florida. It'd be cool to be able to watch that live as it, goes, um, as it goes up to auction. They have no reserve, which means no matter what it brings, it's gonna sell, so possibly if the, the, the winning bid might be quite a bit lower than that. But I thought that was kind of interesting. The other thing is interesting is that I remember years ago, General Motors was downsizing all their cars, you know, because of the gas crunch, everything else. I remember back in 08, when they had talk of the fuel pricing going to maybe six or seven dollars a gallon, the Suburbans and Tahoes that we had on the lot, I ended up losing thousands and thousands of dollars just to get rid of them because we assumed that we were going to be stuck with them. The values dropped two to three thousand dollars overnight when it was announced that there was a rumor that the fuel prices, which were hovering at four dollars a gallon, were going to go to six and seven dollars. Well, what does that do to the market? Well, it kills the market. So we blew out all those cars for loss and now there is a new article in automotive news that says that GM's uh, vehicles are more massive than ever as a matter of fact um, it says here the current Suburban is already the longest SUV on the market and the 2021 is going to be one and a half inches longer than the current one uh, which is really interesting and it's going to be up 19 percent more cargo space now I don't know how they do that with one inch longer or one and a half inch longer uh, remember the old Ford excursion that was the largest SUV ever, and it's only a one and a half inch, a one and a half cubic feet bigger than the next year's Suburban. And that was called the Excursion, if you remember that one. They even made that in a diesel. Uh, changes to the new Tahoe in 21, uh, 2021 are even more dramatic. It's funny that we're talking about 2021 because it's not even 2020 yet. But in the car business, 2020 happens in August and September. The, care, the, the, the changeover to the new cars, the new model year, is n normally the second week of July. It takes about 30 to 40 days to get the vehicle on the lot. So I'm already talking 2020 for the last four months. We have 2020 models already on our lot used 2020s. So now we're talking about 2021 already, and it says that uh, the 10 inches more third row leg room. Can you imagine getting in the back of a Tahoe right now, which I have done, and it's really not that tight back there, but they're going to have 10 inches more leg room in next year's model. So if you're thinking about getting a 2020 model, you might want to hold up and look at the new 2021. And of course, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more expensive also. Um, uh, and they'll put big incentives on the 2020, uh, probably even more than now. Um, Year-end closeout is now, they say the biggest incentives ever are right now on the cars. But I got a feeling if they're going to make a better vehicle the next year, they're going to have to give a reason for someone to buy the old model. And that is because uh, they're going to be dropping the price and increasing the incentives. 66% more cargo area with all the seats up. How do you do that? You're not increasing the length of the vehicle, but you're increasing back leg room by 10 inches and cargo area by 66%.
Some engineers should get a gold star for that. The redesigned Tahoe can haul more, boast roomier rear seats than the current Suburban. So the new Tahoe, which is quite a bit shorter than the Suburban, has more room than the current Suburban. Isn't that interesting? That's very exciting. Anyways, that's what's going on in the car industry. One more new thing that I want to talk about is uh, I've had a couple of customers ask me, well, what is the average dealership? How many cars does a dealership sell? You know, and, and that's always been a, a question. And, uh, and I, 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 a lot of times I pick up new car dealerships and I, I pick up new car dealerships because I'm not a new car dealer. Um, and I talk about how, uh, how expensive it is to get a new car franchise and to build um, the mausoleum that is required by the manufacturers to sell their cars. And you'd know that by going to Car City. And, I, and, and I, I, sometimes I shake my head because they're absolutely gorgeous. I would love to have a mausoleum like that, just I don't want to pay for it. And I always wonder what, how much money do you have to make per car to be able to pay for the overhead when you're pay, paying millions and millions and millions of dollars for the property alone that's before you even put the building on there. Um, so even if you pay cash, the overhead, uh, the insurance, and the taxes have got to make you need to sell a vehicle at a, at, at a real high price. But what I was talking about is people ask me, well, how many cars do they have to sell to make a living? I really don't know. That depends on the dealership and what their overhead. But I do know that last month, Toyota um, had the highest sales per dealership. They sold 144 new Toyotas per dealership on the average. Now our average dealership is Bob Tyler. I'm not sure how many cars they sold, but there are, I would say that I would put them in the average category. Matter of fact, I believe that right now Bob Tyler Toyota is the number one new car selling uh, dealer out there. I think a couple years ago it used to be uh, the Nissan dealership, Sandy Sensei Nissan. Right now it's Toyota. Now, they're coming on strong. Toyota, of course, has an excellent product and that's why they sell more than anybody. Number two is kind of interesting. It's Lexus, which is very interesting because Lexus is a, a highline experience expensive vehicle. They sell 125 Lexus cars and trucks per dealership. They have got to be making a killing. Um, Honda, 114 is number three. Mercedes-Benz, now this is very unusual. Mercedes-Benz sells almost 100 Mercedes-Benz per dealership. I know that Centennial is our local dealer. I don't think they sell anything close to that. They're a great dealer, but it's very interesting that they're that high. When you think, when you when you look down on, uh, for example, if you look at uh, Cadillac, the average Cadillac dealership sells 15 cars per dealership. I wonder sometimes if you're an independent Cadillac dealer, in other words, you don't have multiple franchises, how do you make money selling 15 cars? I don't know how they do that, but one way they do that is by selling used cars and getting into the used car industry. And again, that's what really, what we do at Frontier Motors is our whole claim to frame at Frontier Motors is telling you, letting you know what a new car costs, what the incentives and rebates are on a brand new car, and then seeing how much we can save you on a car that might be six months old, maybe seven months old, and talk about, and we'll talk about depreciation. So I've got my phone out right here, and I always uh, I bring uh, one of my uh, um, commercials with me that we have uh, being done by Dave Ramsey. And Dave Ramsey is kind of a cool dude, if everybody knows, most people know who that is, he's the money guru. And he actually picked Frontier Motors out of the crowd when he was doing an independent commercial. He does not sponsor any new car dealerships that's used. And he picked us. We didn't go to Dave and say, hey Dave, would you do a commercial for us? He came to Frontier Motors about 10 years ago and said that I've, I've done my research and you are the dealer to go to in Pensacola and uh, do you want me to sponsor you? And I said, absolutely. And here's what Dave has to say. Hey Pensacola, Dave Ramsey here. Thinking of buying a brand new car? Well, that's a big mistake. Last year, the average new car was $36,000, and the first year depreciation was 27%. That equates to a whopping $9,200. Go to the dealer that specializes in low-mileage, one-year-old cars and trucks, my friends at Frontier Motors. They're a used car dealer that I'm proud to recommend. Frontier will save you money over the price of a new car. gets interrupted when I get a phone call. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyways, we get to just, Dave says in 60 seconds what takes me half an hour to say, and basically, again, to reiterate what Dave is saying is that, that if you're going to be buying a new car for the first time ever, Consumers Reports last year put this into writing on a graph and said if you buy a brand new car, a brand new car last year cost about 36000 If you trade that car in this year, you're gonna lose 9200 bucks. Isn't that crazy? 
Why would anybody buy a brand new car? Why not buy that car half a year old and save? Now, you're not going to save $9,200 because if that's what it depreciates, obviously the dealer that gets that car, which might be Frontier Motors, has to make a profit, has to pay expenses. Um, so, But you might still save $5,000 or $6,000 on a car that's half a year old. And I think if, if, if it was my money, $6,000 is a lot. And don't forget, if you pay $6,000 less, you also save about 7% of taxes on that $6,000, which might be another $350 or $400. The fees when you buy a used car are less than when you buy a new car. There's no tire tax, there's no battery tax, there's other fees that are less when you buy a used car. So that all adds up. And what if Frontier Motors pays you more for your trade-in than a new car dealership? And th I always use the example that if, for example, you're driving a pickup truck, let's say it's a 250 diesel, and you decide, well, I'm going to go and trade it in on a brand new RX350 Lexus over at Lexus Mobile. How excited is that used car manager when they appraise that diesel truck? Not too excited. There's not too many people going on a Lexus used car lot looking for diesel trucks. So what do they do? They get an outside independent source to appraise your vehicle that is going to want that vehicle. It normally is going to be quite a bit less because they're not using it for retail, which means you get a lower appraisal. Well, at Frontier Motors, because we deal in every make and model, we will give you high, when we sell a lot of diesel trucks, we sell a lot of regular trucks, we sell small trucks, sports cars, it doesn't really matter. Being an independent dealer, we sell every make and model. When you go to a Lexus dealership, their used car department wants a certain type of vehicle on the lot. I'm not, says, I'm not saying it necessarily has to be a Lexus, but a lot of times it might be a BMW, a Lexus support, a vehicle like what they would normally sell on their lot. Not so much a, a Chevy Suburban or maybe a Chevy Cruze or a Ford Escape. They're going to outsource those cars, which means, to go, again, to you, if you're trading that in, a lower appraisal. And that's why we ask you to stop in at Frontier Motors to get an idea of what our appraisal would be. And within 15 minutes, I can tell you folks, within 15 minutes, we can give you an appraisal. And that would be a buy bid on your car if we want the car for a lot, or a legitimate appraisal on what you should be getting in trade. I always think that if you're going to be buying a car um, at another dealership and spending you know, thirty or forty thousand dollars at that dealership, they should give you more money for the trade-in than someone like Frontier Motors. And I'm always shocked somehow how that doesn't happen. And a lot of times you get a low appraisal for more than one reason. One reason I already mentioned is maybe they just don't want that type of vehicle a lot. The other reason might be, and you'll never know this, is what if they don't have the money to buy your vehicle? And a lot of people don't know this, but most dealerships have a limit on the dollar amount that they have uh, available to them. And for example, if a, a used car lot has a million dollar inventory, but they're already over a million dollars and you bring them a $30,000 trade-in, they have to outsource that car because they don't have the money to buy that car. Now, of course, they're never going to tell you this, but again, that's why you might get a low appraisal and that's why it would take, it would be foolish not to take me up on my offer of giving you a free appraisal. Folks, we can do this over the phone too. You might not want to drive the Frontier Motors. We're, we're on Beverly Parkway right in the middle of Scambia County. But why not just give us a call? Give us a call. Give us an ex, uh, a description of your car. Give us the ID number so we can run the history report. The history report says a lot about the car. And the reason that we wouldn't want the history report is because let's say that you've had four accidents with your car. That would make a difference on the appraisal. We would want to know about that because I don't want to give you a false appraisal. So I need to know the ID number that helps us give you that, the, 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 the value of your car. So that's one of the other things to do that, that we can help you with. And an example of depreciation, folks, I got a window sticker here. We just bought a Corvette the other day. This is a 2016 Z06. If you don't know what a Z06 is, that's a high-performance Corvette. And this particular one has all the carbon fiber, all the stuff on it. A window sticker on this car was $93,480. Let's round that up to $94,000. This vehicle has 17,000 miles on it. I can sell it and still make a little bit of money on the car and sell it for $59,500. That means you're saving $34,000 thousand dollars in two years. This car, according to Carfax, is a little over two years old and you're saving $34,000. Now I know that's an extreme example. Obviously, the more expensive the car is, like Dave Ramsey said, if you lose 27% in the first year, if you have a $100,000 car, for example, you're going to lose $27,000 in the first year. 
If you have a $30,000 car, obviously the dollar amount is quite a bit different. We already talked about 36,000 equates to $9,200 loss in the first year loan. So what we are, if we're going to, if I was going to say, well, what do you specialize in at Frontier Motors, Ivan? I would say that we really don't specialize in anything. But if I was going to be pushed, I would say we specialize in current market new cars with under 15,000 miles. We probably have 150 of our cars on the lot right now that have under 15,000 miles on it. We have another 50 to 75 that have under 30,000 miles that are still in the factory warranty. And then of course, by having so many newer cars on the lot, we also take a lot of real nice trade-ins that can be sold under $10,000. So just because we specialize in the alternative to new, we also have cars under 10,000, sometimes even under $6,000 that are very nice cars that have a lot of life left in them. And even Consumers Reports says that the best value is a three to four year old car. Now some people that are thinking of a new car, I'm not gonna be able to uh, show them a three year old car, but I could perhaps show them a 2020 or 2019 with maybe six or 7,000 miles on it at a, at, a, at a big discount. This morning I just bought a Q7, an Audi, I'm sorry, an Audi Q5. And if you don't know what that is, that's their uh, uh, mid-sized SUV, it's a Q5. It's a 2018 model, it has 7,000 miles on it. <clears throat> I ran the window sticker, it was $63,000 brand new. I can sell that vehicle for $49,900. So that's about up to $50,000. So you're talking about 7,000 miles, and the person that, that had that car is going to be losing about $13,000 over the price of a new one. That is a huge depreciation. The other thing we also have, folks, is the incentives. <clears throat> I'm, I sometimes get frustrated with dealers that put their incentives in writing, but then don't give the incentives to the customers because they don't qualify. I saw this the other day on a pickup truck. Up to 28% off. Up to $14,700 savings. So I went, when a customer came and said that the other day, it was on a pickup truck, I'm not gonna mention the make and model because it's a local dealer that has that. But when you go to the local dealer's website and you click on the incentives, a big disclaimer comes out. It doesn't show it when you look at the vehicle, but when you see the rebates, there's a little icon that you can click on and it tells you that all of these rebates are not going to work with every single customer. Because a lot of them are rebates, like for example, the owner loyalty rebate. Now what is that? Well, that means if you're buying a Nissan pickup truck, if you own, currently own a Nissan pickup truck, you're gonna get an extra rebate for it. I remember when I was selling new cars, we had all kinds of goofy rebates. Now this was a long time ago, but I remember the college grad rebate, college graduate rebate gave you an extra $1,500. If you were a first time buyer, you got a $1,000 rebate. Uh, if you were a farmer, you got $500. If you were military, you got 1,000. Well, what if you're none of those? Now, what they do on the ads, they add all those rebates together. Well, the chance of you qualifying for all of them is ridiculous. But guess what you gotta do? You gotta go in and see them. Because when they're advertising $14,000 off of a new pickup truck, it's a pretty darn good deal. And if you could really get that, I would tell you buy new, because I'm buying these vehicles quite a bit less than new, but that's a really good deal. I would actually tell you, go ahead and buy it, if you can qualify. I have yet to have a customer say that he got all the rebates. It doesn't happen. I'm not saying you don't buy new. 17 million people last year bought a new car, and we're on pace this year. We've only got a little while left to do 17 million again, which, by the way, is a phenomenal feat. They've hit that about the last five years. They've hit 17 million cars. The most ever sold was, I think, four years ago at 17 and a half million cars, which means that a lot of people are not, are not taking my advice. Because my advice and Dave Ramsey's advice is buy one that's half a year old. Have somebody else take the loss. But a lot of people get that new car fever. They love that smell when you open the door. They love being able to pick out exactly what they want or maybe even ordering a car. And I can understand that, that if you're not flexible with color or equipment, it's a little difficult to find exactly what you want. But that's where Frontier Motors comes in because we have a great locate program, which means that we will find you the car you want. Let's say you come in our lot and you want a Lexus RX 350. I've got a black one and a white one and a blue one, but you say, you know, I really like a burgundy one. 
And we might show you the ones we have and say, hey, would you take the wrong color you know, for the right price? And you say, nope, nope, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I want the color I want. So then instead of losing your business and you going and buying a brand new one, we say, well, let me give you a price on one that's a 2019 or maybe a 20 that's used and let me, and if that's enough of a savings to get you to, to, to get us to look for a car for you, I will find that car. Remember what I said when we started the show, between 20 and 25,000 cars available to myself every single week. New cars, these are sold every week and 25,000 new cars. People say, well, where do these cars come from? They come from everywhere. I don't really care where they come from. People always say, well, what's, is something wrong with these cars? If there's something wrong with them, I'm not gonna buy them and put them on a lot. We're gonna do the history report. We're gonna do our due diligence. We're gonna get the, 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 the auction to warranty those cars to me that if it's a bad car or a lemon, they won't, they have to disclose everything. And with the history reports, Carfax, the auto check, we, and, and our buyers, I, I don't buy them online. I've got our buyers that physically drive down to the auction. I've got a guy that drives from Atlanta to Orlando every single week because I don't trust the computer. I don't just click on it and buy it. I want him there, I want him to smell it, to see it, to make sure it's a non-smoker, to make sure it's not dinged up and scratched up, to make sure that it's got two keys and the books there in the glove box, and that I only buy cars that are really, really nice or I don't mess with them. A lot of dealers love buying cars that are subpar and because they're getting a better deal on them so they can advertise them cheaper. I'm, we're not like that. I don't take a car and fluff it up. I want a car that's been very well taken care of, where the person changed the oil on time, and it's not been an accident, and it's absolutely perfect like new. And if you're going to be looking at a 2019, I think that's what you expect. We've only got a couple of minutes left, folks, and I want to remind you that we're at 230 Beverly Parkway. We are on Facebook right now, streaming this live. If you have somebody that's in the market for a vehicle, you can either go to Facebook and, uh, and uh, get, our, uh, get our inventory. You can go to our website, of course, at FrontierMotorsInc.com. Just Google Frontier Motors. There's about four Frontier Motors in the nation. We're the largest one, so we pop up first. Approximately 400 cars in inventory, 31 to 50 detailed photographs. They all have pricing on there. If you come in our lot, we give you a price list um, that we share with you. It looks like this and uh, it has all of the NADA values. It has all the retail prices and description on there so um, you can shop at your leisure. Our salespeople are nice enough to unlock every single car every morning. If you're in a hurry, you can slip behind the wheel, see how it feels, because if it doesn't feel right, it's the wrong car. And isn't it frustrating when you got salesmen got to run back and forth for keys to unlock 10 different cars? If you're on your lunch hour, we unlock them all. And also, by the way, folks, uh, we've got a, uh, if you go to YouTube and just type in Frontier Motors, this show is gonna be on YouTube in about four or five days. We also have previous shows, so if anybody's in the market, tell them to go to YouTube and, uh, and put in Frontier Motors, and uh, they're gonna get a quick education on what we do for the people in the, in the community. Again, to sum everything up, folks, free advice. If you're gonna sell or buy a car, call us and we'll tell you how to do it, how to go about buying one, how to go about selling one, and who knows, if you drive at the Frontier Motors, what if I just write you a check for your car, cancel the insurance, take your tag off, take the check, and put it in your pocket. That's Frontier Motors, 230 Beverly Parkway. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Have a great day, I'll be the same. Guess what, you're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay, come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead. Frontier.